In this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate how to tune a multi-axis machine with a dual axis. Here's a quick preview. A dual axis system consists of a master axis and a prime axis. Having a prime axis in your machine allows the load to be shared across the two motors instead of being handled by only one motor. Tuning these mechanisms is slightly more challenging than tuning a single axis because these two motors can be tied together with a rigid structure or a flexible structure. Parameter 10C for the prime axis amplifier needs to be set to zero during the tuning so the speed loop's integration gain is bypassed for that axis. Tuning the prime axis requires that the motion profile comes from the controller and it is beneficial to use the system tuning function built into Sigma 1 Plus. Now let's look at this in a little more detail. To start off with, let's clarify what is meant by a dual axis system. A dual axis system is any mechanism that contains two motors that move a load on the same axis. A dual axis system can also be referred to as a dual motor gantry or dual axis mechanism. This system is made up of a master and slave motor. Prime axis is a term used by Iskawa for the slave motor in a dual axis system. Here is a version of a dual motor gantry. You can see that on the two outer rails, there are independent motors that move the center load along the same axis. The prime axis can be either one of these motors and serves as a position assist motor during motion. This is a rotary version of a dual axis system. It still contains a master and prime axis that moves the two loads that are connected by a coupling. Multiple methods can be used to tune both motors of a dual axis system at the same time. Two main tuning configurations are available when tuning a dual axis system that uses Yaskawa motors and servo amplifiers. One configuration works with a third party controller, and the other works with an MPIC controller. Either one of these controllers is required to provide the tuning motion because Sigma 1 Plus does not support program jog on multiple servo amplifiers. Since both motors can be accessed at the same time, Sigma 1 Plus system tuning can be used to tune them. If a third party controller is being used, the computer running Sigma 1 Plus needs to be connected to each servo amplifier via a USB cable. Using an MP3000 IEC series controller allows you to connect to multiple servo amplifiers using Sigma 1 Plus over Mechatronic instead of connecting to each one with a USB cable. One main parameter needs to be adjusted so that the tuning operation will complete successfully. PN10C, that's the torque reference level when the speed loop switches over to using proportional control instead of proportional and integration control. What does this exactly mean when it comes to tuning a dual axis system? The default setting for PN10C is 200%. So while the torque is under 200% of its rated value, both motors will arrive at the requested controller position using their own torque, speed, and position loops. The integration part of the speed loop within each servo amplifier causes motors to fight against each other when accelerating and decelerating. Here's a trace that shows what is happening between the two motors when PN10C is set on both motors to 200%. There should be no torque difference between the two motors when at the same velocity, but after acceleration, the torque is different between the two motors, so it tries to make them the same and then the motors decelerate. Even when the motors are stopped, there is a torque difference. By setting PN10C to 0% on the prime axis, the torque difference between the two motors becomes minimal during and after motion. Compliance between the main and prime axis plays a major part when trying to tune the dual axis system as well. If the structure is rigid and the master motor can handle the full load, the prime axis could be disconnected and the motors can be tuned separately. If the connection between the motors is not rigid or flexes, then both motors need to be tuned at the same time so the machine does not bind up during tuning. Different tuning modes are available depending on if the motors can be tuned separately or at the same time. Tuning list can be used, but is not recommended because the tuning list algorithm is not shared between the amplifiers. The dynamic values between the two servo amplifiers may differ, which can cause an increased settling time and in some cases, increased position error. For best operation, both motors need to have the same tuning settings. Advanced auto tuning is available if the prime axis motor can be disconnected and if the load can be positioned using only the master motor. 
If this is true, then after the advanced tuning process, the tuning parameters from the master servo amplifier need to be copied directly into the prime axis servo amplifier. System tuning is just like custom tuning for a single motor, but can be used with multiple motors. In a dual motor situation, the motor's feed forward and feedback parameters need to be set at the same time. A selection is available to adjust the motors equally or to adjust them individually. Just like for custom tuning, the tuning mode can be defined along with the mechanism type. During tuning, notch filters and anti-resonance filters can be added if needed. One note is that system tuning does require that the inertia ratio for the motors is found beforehand. The inertia ratio is the load inertia divided by the motor inertia. In a dual motor system, load is being shared across the master motor and the prime motor. What amount of the overall load inertia ratio should be assigned to each motor? Using this example, each motor never sees the entire load because the other motor is always moving some amount of the load. If the load is in the middle, 50% of the inertia ratio could be applied to both motors because they are both moving the same load. But if the load is all the way on the left side, the left motor will see a higher inertia ratio than the right motor. And if the load is on the right side, the right side motor sees a higher inertia ratio compared to the left side. A percentage above 50%, but below 100% of the total load inertia is needed to tune the system. Through trial and error for ball screw and belt slide systems, I have found that 60% of the overall inertia ratio is a good starting point for each motor. This is an average of the inertia ratio where the load is next to the motor and when it is furthest away from the motor. In a system like this, how would one go about finding the overall inertia ratio? If one motor is able to move the load, then the inertia calculator tool can be used within Sigma Win Plus. The prime axis motor would have to be disconnected and then the tool can be used to estimate the total inertia. The load should be centered as if both motors would see the same load even though the prime axis is disconnected. Since this is finding the total inertia ratio of the system, a percentage above 50% should be applied to each motor. If the prime axis motor cannot be disconnected, or if the structure connecting the two motors is not rigid, then the inertia calculator tool cannot be used. Another option then is to use Sigma Select. For most applications, Sigma Select is used to determine what motor is required to move the load for the application. There's no way to specify that two motors will be sharing the load, so to find the overall inertia ratio, you would apply the entire load to one motor. This gives you an estimated total load inertia ratio for the mechanism. You also want to make sure that the motor you'll be using is selected. This method, though, only gives an estimation of the total inertia ratio, so a percentage above 50% should be applied to each motor. For more complex systems, and to get a closer and more exact inertia ratio, graphical analysis can be used. Finding the inertia ratio by graphical analysis is a multi-step process that involves running the motors using the tuning move profile and graphing the torque and speed. An Excel workbook with embedded equations is used to take the measured acceleration torque, measured acceleration, motor rate of torque, and motor rate of inertia and calculate the inertia ratio. Tuning this may be needed to provide stable motion when running the motion profile for graphical analysis. The inertia ratio value found using this mode can directly be applied to each motor. An e-learning module explaining exactly how to do this can be found in Yaskawa's LMS at training.yaskawa.com. At this point, I'm going to go through and demonstrate how to tune a prime axis. The setup I will be using is a MP3300 IEC and Sigma 7 demo with two SGM7J motors that are coupled together. This simulates a rigid connection between the main and prime axis motors. The motion profile used for tuning will be an out and back move. Motion profile information can be seen here. To start, I have to answer the following questions. First, how rigid is the structure between the two motors? It is a two-piece compression coupling which is directly connecting the motors to each other. Second, can the load be driven by one motor? The answer is yes. The final question then is, can the prime motor be disconnected from the mechanism for tuning? The prime motor cannot easily be disconnected from the load, so system tuning is required to tune this mechanism rather than advanced auto-tuning. Now that I know the tuning method, I can start setting up to tune the system. Beforehand, I created a simple Motionworks IC project so that I can run the demo. I can power on the amplifiers. I have a simple move linear absolute 
that basically moves the motors out and then a second one to move them back. They're just a simple out and back move. And then I do have some function blocks used to group the normal axis and the prime axis together. So to start, I have to go into hardware configuration and then I want to connect to make sure that I have all the parameters set. So right now here are my axes. I have X, Y, and then my X prime. And my X and X prime have been set up as prime axes within hardware configuration under the group section. At this point, I want to make sure that both my amplifiers have been optimized. So I'm gonna go in and optimize each amplifier. And now I want to save. And then I'm gonna do a reboot. And that's all that needs to be done in hardware configuration. While that's rebooting, I can go into Sigma Plus and now I can actually modify some extra parameters here as well. So inside Sigma Plus, I'm gonna look at the parameters. And the first parameter I want to look at is PN10C. So I can see here that my master axis, which is axis A, is set to 200. And then my prime axis, which is my slave axis, is already set to zero. I've also already set up PN520 and PN522. So now I want to take a basic trace just to see where the two motors are functioning right now when it comes to tuning. So I'm going to go in and open up a trace for both of my motors. I'm going to go in and run my move. And while the move is running, I'm going to take a trace. So looking at the trace, I'm gonna zoom in and the settling time comes in at about 91 milliseconds. It does prematurely settle for a little bit, but the true settling time is out here. And if I zoom out, we can see that the position error is not bad throughout the motion, but it does go high and low at the start and end of motion. And we see that the motors are sort of pulling in the torque when it's accelerating and decelerating. Now I'm going to go and use system tuning and see what can be changed, at least according to the settling time. So to do system tuning, I need to go in and edit the parameters on both of my motors. And I need to turn off tunless mode. Before I go into system tuning, I now have to add in the inertia ratio because that has not been defined. So I'm going to edit parameters for both of my motors. Previously, I create a project inside Sigma Select and I found the inertia ratio to be right around 44.6 for the estimated inertia ratio. For this example, I'm going to use 60% of 44.6, which comes out to 27 to one. So I'm going to set PN103 to 2700%. Now that the inertia ratio is set, I can go and open up system tuning. I'm gonna go in and adjust all of them equally. I'm gonna select axis A of the SGD7W amplifier as my base axis and my master axis. And then I'm also gonna select my other axis of the SGD7S for my prime axis or slave axis. So now these two are linked together. Just like for custom tuning, I'm gonna go in and choose my tuning mode. And I'm also going to set this to rigid model from a mechanism type. I'm gonna go back into MotionWorks IC and start my motion again. And I'm going to start tuning. And right now with feed forward level of 50 and feedback level of 40, I'm going to take a quick trace. So looking at the trace, I can see it looks a little bit different. The motors aren't fighting each other. You can see that the position error is a lot higher than with tuning less. If I look over here at settling time, I can see that just by turning on system tuning with default values, I was able to decrease my settling time down to 22.394 milliseconds. Now from here, I can go back into system tuning and I can make some adjustments and I'll take another trace. And if I look at the settling time again, I can see that I have improved my settling time just by increasing the feed forward and feedback levels. Right now, I'm happy with 16 milliseconds. Now the master and prime axes have been tuned. 
This then completes the tuning of the dual axis system. For more information on server amplifier tuning, visit training.yaskawa.com and search for tuning ELMs along with the self-guided training course.